Welcome back to this free training on how to start a profitable newsletter business within 30 days. We're here on day 14. We've covered a huge amount so far, including picking your niche, working out how you're going to get monetized and actually start earning from day one. We talked about what kind of content you can put into your newsletter. And we've also spent several videos talking about AI, not only how we can use AI in order to write the newsletter, but also how we can use AI to build the newsletter. We're going to get on to building the newsletter itself very soon in the second part of these 30 days. But what I want to do in this video is tell you what the five mistakes are that you need to avoid before you start. And this is crucial because you can have all the tech in the world, but if you don't get these five things sorted from day one, you're not going to have people subscribing. You're not going to have people opening your newsletter on a regular basis. So you're not going to have those high open rates and you're not going to have people clicking on your links to buy your affiliate offers or buy from your partners or sponsors or buy your own products. And that means you're not going to make any money. And we want to make sure that if you're going to put time into this, you are going to get that reward of being able to bring in clients or to sell more products, whether they're yours or an affiliates. So I've got five things that we're going to talk about. If you can cover all of these and make sure you have these in mind as you're building your newsletter, then you're doing the best you can. You're setting yourself up so that you've got the best chance of success. The first thing we're going to talk about is quality over quantity. There is absolutely no point putting rubbish out there. If you're low on time at the beginning, I've recommended before a curated newsletter. If you're low on time, you can also use AI and we've recommended tools that you can use to write your newsletter if you're going to go with long form. And again, I'll put those tools in the description so you can click on the links, videos, we've covered them and you can go and watch those. But what you want to do is you want to be providing quality content that they can't find anywhere else. There's no point copying someone else out there and doing the same thing. You need to set yourself apart. So find a part of the market that you can dominate and go after that. Maybe it is your interest, something you're passionate about, because remember you could be writing to a very small audience for quite a while before you get to a point where you can start getting sponsors. So you need to be able to write about something that you're passionate about or knowledgeable about, and you're happy to write about that for a while. So quality long form content that can't be found anywhere else. So it might be something similar, but you've got a, a spin on it. So whether it is about reviewing products and you're going purely affiliate, maybe it's talking about a particular part of a niche. So maybe you're in sort of um, holistic care and then you're gonna go after one particular area of that. So you can then go on and coach people or sell coaching products. You want to make sure that what you're offering is quality. The second thing is we want to make sure that it is easy to consume. People have signed up to your newsletter and they are dedicating a small amount of their day to read your newsletter. And we want to be respectful of that. So we provide them with good quality content and we make it easy for them to consume. It's concise. It looks beautiful. It's laid out in a way that's easy to read. It's got pictures. It's clear where the links are. It is very easy for somebody to consume. And if it's difficult to consume your newsletter, people will unsubscribe. So we've talked about previously, I've shown you templates that you can use. We've talked about layout. And we're gonna talk about layout more when we start looking in detail at Beehive. But it needs to be well-designed, well laid out, easy to browse and it needs to be something where a subscriber can have a quick flick through and decide whether this issue is for them or not and just as easy for them to find what they want and read in detail you'll have some of your subscribers that will consume all of your newsletter and some will be there for just a small bit so for example with our newsletter some people come to read it because they want to know about the AI tools 
that are on the market first and they want that detail and others are there because they want to have a look at what the latest offers are because they're looking for a bargain. So your newsletter needs to be easy to read, easy to consume and browse so that the person who's come to read your newsletter, they can easily find what they need. And the next thing you need to do is you need to be consistent. It is an absolute waste of your time to decide you're going to release a newsletter edition every single day of the week and then after two weeks you give up. You want to build a readership that are expecting to see your email. So if you're going to release it first thing on a Wednesday morning, it needs to be the same time, the same day every week. If you can't keep up with three days a week, don't do it. It's better to start off weekly. Yes, you'll grow slower, but you can then add in two or three days a week as you grow and as you get more able to put more content out, whether that's just you get more organized and better what you're doing or whether you start to outsource. So people need to always get your newsletter at the same time every week. So don't plan to release it on a Friday if your Wednesday and Thursday are incredibly busy. Think about it, decide when you're gonna release it before you actually publicize it. The next thing is give value first. Yes, we want to be paid. Yes, we want sponsorship deals. We want promotions. We wanna earn from our affiliate links. But first and foremost, you are serving your audience. So you don't just give them quality content, but you give them value. You provide so much value that you keep them coming back for more. You're not giving everything away. Maybe you are writing a newsletter for yourself because you are a coach. You are showing your knowledge, you're providing value, you're making that person's life better. And then eventually they may decide to hire you as a coach. If your newsletter is about food and recipes, then you're providing that audience, maybe it's families that only have 20 minutes to cook each night, healthy recipes every week. And then it gets to a point where you have a cookbook and then they go ahead and they buy your cookbook as a digital product. But we want to serve our audience first. We want to be providing value. And that leads us on to the last one, which is offer products that fit the audience's needs. You want to find out what your audience actually needs. Now you can experiment in your newsletter with this. You can ask your audience what they need, ask them to reply to the newsletter. You can poll them, do some market research. But the only way you're going to truly make money is if people know when your newsletter is turning up, it's easy for them to find what they need. It's quality content that makes their life better, whether that's at home or whether that's at work. It is full of value and the products that are offered in the newsletter are valuable to the audience as well because then they won't feel like they're being sold to. If you're consistently providing value and solving problems for them, then when you offer a product, it won't feel salesy. It will feel like the next natural thing for them to do in order to solve that problem. So those are the five things you need to consider before you even write your first newsletter episode. Now, if you want to see some of the AI tools that we've been using, you should be able to click on the screen now. Otherwise, they're down in the description. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one.